In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create a path from CSV data. And I hate those long tutorial openings, so let's go. For this tutorial, I'll be using an easily accessible data set. I'm going to be using US coronavirus data, and I'll be looking at the deaths per month from February 2020 through January 2021. And it's a really simple data set. I just have two columns, one which is the month, one which is deaths. The important thing to remember here is that After Effects sees the first column and the first row is zero. So the zero column is column A, month, and the one column is column B, deaths. So we'll come back to that when we actually write our expression. So I've created a new comp and the first thing I'm going to do is to create my control layer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make a quick null and rename it control. And I'm gonna make it a guide layer. I'm going to change the color just because I want to. Um, and then I'm going to create my line layer. So I'll do a new shape layer. This will be my line. And the final thing I'm going to do is import my CSV into my project and bring it into my line comp. So I have my CSV here, bring it down. The next thing I'm going to do is on my control layer, I'm going to make two sliders. Expression control, slider control. The first slider I'm going to name number of rows. And the second slider I'm going to name max y value. And so the first slider number of rows is going to give me a little bit more control over the data that is appearing on screen. So if I want to see everything in my data sheet, I don't have to use number of rows. But if I say I want to see the first six months, the first eight months, and so on, I can just slide between those numbers and that's just going to give me a little bit more flexibility. This second slider, max y value, is going to be dictated by your data set. So in my data set, the highest it goes up to is 83,000. So I don't want this slider to go too much more than that. I probably want it to be maybe a nice round number that's fairly close to 83, maybe 100,000, maybe 90,000. I can go ahead and put that in now. We'll say 100,000. I'm actually going to call this slider number of points so it's a little bit more consistent with the expression that we're building. So now we want to actually start building our line. And the first thing I'm going to do is add a stroke. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger now. I'll make it a 8 width. Next I'm going to add the path and this is where we're going to do our actual expression. To build our expression we're going to define a bunch of top level variables. So the first thing I'm going to do is make variables for both of our sliders. And the first variable I'm going to call number of points. And the second, I'm going to call max y value. The next variable I'm going to do is a starting point, because we have to define a starting point for our line, and we want that to start at zero. The next variable I'm going to do is defining the spacing between each of the points in our path. So we want it to be evenly spaced from point zero to the end of our composition 1920. To get that, we just need to do a little bit of math. So I just want to take the width of the comp and divide that by the number of points that we're defining on our slider. We could use the number of points in our CSV file, but I'm using number of points on our slider because I want that control. And with this, I've found that it doesn't quite take you to the end of your composition. It's not as noticeable if you have a bigger data set where you have over 300, 400 points, but in a set with a larger amount of spacing, it's quite noticeable and it can throw you off when you try and put this line into a bigger graph. So to account for that, all I need to do is to subtract one from the number of points.
And the final variable I'm going to do for this top level is defining the array that will power our path. So I'm calling this array of points. And I'm just adding an empty array. Now that we've defined our top level variables, we need to tell the expression what we want it to do. What we want it to do is to create a path using the information from array of points. So to do that, I'm just going to use the create path expression, tell it to look at array of points, and I don't care about the tangential data, so I'm going to have two empty arrays there. Just These are just nulls telling it we don't have any information there. And because we don't want the ends to connect, we're going to put false at the end. So now we have these parts of our expression set up. Now we need something to push the CSV data into our array so that it can create the path. The way we're going to do this is with a for loop. And if you're not familiar with for loops, it's just code that runs your instructions over and over again until you tell it to stop. So we're going to begin our for loop by defining our variable i and telling we're starting it at zero. And then we need to tell our loop when to stop. And we're going to use number of points as the indicator of when to stop. You could use the number of rows of your CSV data to do this, but I've used number of points because I want the flexibility to change where we end our data. So as long as i is less than the number of points, continue running the code. And then I++ is kind of a shorthand to say, after you run the loop, increase it by one. So just to recap our for loop so far, we're starting our variable at zero, we're adding one to that every loop, and we're running our for loop for the number of times we've defined in our slider. So within our for loop, we have to define some more variables. And the first variable I'm going to define is going to tell us to look at the CSV. And because our data is monthly deaths, that's what I'm going to call it. And I'm going to pull up to our CSV. And I need to get even more specific, so I'm going to ask it for a data value. And the value I'm looking at is column one. Remember, column one is the second column. And I want my for loop to loop through each row. I'm going to define the column, but I'm going to put the variable in the row. So we're starting at row zero. Next loop, we're going to row one. Next loop, we're going to row two, so on. The next thing I want to do is to define the y-axis of our data. I want to map the maximum y value that I've determined in my slider to the composition height. To do that, I'm going to do something very straightforward. I'm just going to use linear. I'm calling my variable line height. And I'm going to use linear. And I want linear to look at my data monthly deaths. And I want to map max y value, our slider, to the composition height. And if I just left it at this, what's going to happen is it's going to invert my graph. Because the way that After Effects looks at points, 0, isn't, zero, zero is in the top left corner of your composition. So in order to get it to the flip to the right side, all we have to do is multiply it by negative one. We're going to do one more variable here. What this is going to do is actually define the x and y coordinates that are going into our array. So we're going to call this data array because this is the data going into our array. In our x, we're going to start with the starting point x which remember is zero. 
and we're going to put our line height in the Y. Now that we've defined the variables, we can get into the actual instructions we want the for loop to carry out. We want our loop to push the data from our data array to array of points, which will then power our path. And then we want it to move our point over on the x-axis. So the first thing we're going to do is push that data to array of points, and we do that by using the push expression. So we're defining where it's going. It's going to array of points, and we're pushing from data array. And next we wanted to move over in the x-axis every loop. So we begin with our starting point x, which we've already defined as zero. Every time it loops, it's going to add a certain amount to it. And what is the amount we wanted to add to it? Well, we've already defined that spacing as spacing for points, which is the width divided by the number of points. Because I've already defined that variable, I'm just going to put it in here. And between these two, I'm going to add a little bit of a for loop shortcut, which is a plus equals. It just means we're adding these two together. Now we have our for loop, we have our create path, everything should be good to go. Let's take a look. But we're getting an error and our line is not showing up. What is going on? What do we do wrong? Well, you may have noticed we don't have any number of points in our slider. So we're using our slider to define the range of values that we're looking at in our CSV. Because there's nothing in there, it's not showing anything up. Because we have 12 values, I'm putting 12 in there. Now we have our line showing up, but it's in the wrong spot. That's because it's not starting at zero. It's starting at 960 by 540. So we want to zero out our X and we want to bring our Y value to the bottom 1080. And there we have our line. And if we want to change our Y axis, we can change it here. Say we want to start at 95,000. Or say we wanted to start at 200,000 can easily be changed. Say we wanted to look at, instead of the whole year, we wanted to look at just six months. All we have to do is change our slider number and our number of points, change it to six months, there we have six. Or if we want eight, now we have eight. When we're animating this and you want it to draw on, all you need to do is add a trim path. And there you go, a data-driven line from your CSV into After Effects, drawing on a graph for you. Once you've created your line, you can nest this comp in another comp and expand out your graph. And the top of the comp will be whatever Y value you have set your slider to. An easy way to keep track of this might be putting a solid behind your line and then building your graph out, removing the solid. That way you can make sure you have the top of your graph in the right place. So here are a couple examples of how I've set this up with larger coronavirus data sets. But be aware that the larger your data set is, the more bogged down After Effects is going to get. I know that with expressions, there's lots of ways to get things done. This is the simplest, most flexible way that I've found to do this. But if you have another way to do it, a better way to do it, I would love to hear it. Leave me a comment below the video. Thanks for watching.